Hello, and welcome to the very first installment of Tough Voyaging Abridged. Uh, Tough Voyaging is a series... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Tough, Tough Voyaging is a series of... <laughs> Just kidding. Tough Voyaging is a series of short stories by George R. R. Martin, uh, who also wrote A Song of Ice and Fire, or you've probably seen the HBO adaptation of that, Game of Thrones. Uh, he's wrote, written a lot of those episodes as well. Uh, he's a great writer. Uh, a, lot, a lot of his other stuff is really good and worth checking out. Um, and here's a, this is a, sh- a series of stories that are fun and worth checking out. <laughs> so here we, here we go. I'll start. Well, actually, I should warn you, uh, if you're listening, um, sorry for the low quality. I'm talking directly into like a gaming microphone. It's not a nice high quality microphone and I'm just doing this for fun. So I'm not going to buy a nicer one, so sorry, it sounds like shit, fucking deal with it. On that note, I'm also going to be speaking in my own vernacular, I curse a lot in my normal life, it's a bad habit, but I do it anyway, so fucking deal, get over it, Uh, or stop listening. This is free, I'm not making you, you don't feel any obligation to listen to something you paid for, because you didn't pay for this shit. And this is shit, let's be real, this is going to be shit. Alright, minute 30 in, here we go, Haviland Tough is an honest space trader, who likes cats. So how is it that, in competition with the worst villains the universe has to offer, he's become the proud owner of a seed ship, the last remnant of Earth's legendary ecological engineering corps? Never mind, just be thankful that the most powerful weapon in human space is in good hands. Hands which now have the godlike ability to control the genetic material of thousands of outlandish creatures. Armed with this unique equipment, Tuff is set to tackle the problems that human settlers have created in colonizing far-flung worlds. Hosts of hostile monsters, a population hooked on procreation, a dictator who unleashes plagues to get his own way, and in every case, the only thing that stands between the colonists and disaster is Tuff's ingenuity, and his reputation as a man of integrity, in a universe of rogues. A whole universe of rogues. No healers, no fighters, no mages. Only rogues in Haviland Tough, the wise man. In control of the engineering, wait, ecological engineering core seed ship. Which is super powerful, by the way. We learned that over the course of the books. Uh, the stories, rather, that uh, the seed ship is, like, nuts. I mean, seriously, it says he has godlike ability to control the genetic material. That is the case. Which doesn't make any sense, because like, I feel like you need to control the genetic material. You need to have some like high-level understanding. But we find out he's just like a regular old... Like, he's pretty smart, but he's just a regular old space merchant. And he just like gets control of this powerful thing, and he knows how to use it perfectly well. Sorry, mega spoilers, because that's what the first story... Like, it's 100 pages long. The first story goes over how he gains control of this ship. And it's, it's a pretty fun one. Uh, but right now we're going to read the prologue, which is one of those annoying prologues that like t- seems to get better if you've already read the story. Like When you first read it, you don't, it there's not enough context to make any of it make sense. Um, but I guess it gives you a sense of the, the immense power that the seed ship has. So the prologue is presented as a... Um, uh, like a voice recording, a, a, a warning given by some dude who got stuck on this planet uh, 276 standard years ago, tentatively dated to that point. It's tentatively dated 276 years ago. And he's get, issuing a warning to anybody who uh, listens <laughs> to say, don't come to this fucking planet because you'll die. Everybody dies here. This place sucks. Don't come here. So that's like how this prologue is presented, but I'll just tell you what's actually going on. Uh, there's a planet, and on this planet are a bunch of slaves. Uh, it's actually a enslaved race, formerly enslaved species. And they're brought to this planet, uh, I guess as a holding cell, because uh, this, this enslaved species is like a warrior fighting species. Uh, and they were enslaved by humans in the distant future. These humans enslaved these creatures. And at some point, the enslaved creatures... Uh, rebelled and they went up and they got they managed to like board this seed ship that the humans controlled and they uh, started fucking shit up and in desperation this is all detailed in like the later stories but I'm just giving it to you now because otherwise this prologue doesn't make any fucking sense uh, so they stormed 
this uh, seed ship, and in desperation, this like it was a skeleton crew of humans that were on it. Uh, they t- activated the seed ship and basically set it on to like a, a permanent fuck shit up cycle. Um, and it was on at the time of this rebellion. It was on an elliptical orbit, or like, uh, what's a better word for it? Anyway, the point is, it, it gets there's periods where it gets really close to this planet, and there's periods where it's really far away, and it's a really long. 200 year cycle of when it gets close so uh, the seed ship was on this long orbit and the uh, the Hroons slave creatures rebelled and they set it on this destruct cycle Uh, but the rebelling creatures still managed to kill all the humans so it ended up that the seed ship becomes abandoned but it's still on this fuck shit up cycle Uh, so over time a thousand years ago this rebellion occurred and the creatures that were stuck on the planet uh, they were only semi-sentient. You know, they weren't like super, um, super bright or anything. They started to develop these mythologies about how their ancient ancestors used to fight for this like glorious super race, and one day the super race will come back and rescue them from this shitty planet where they die every two hundred years. Um, so there's the seed ship in this prologue in the prologue Barvik. Uh, Hort Vinzi is the name of the guy who recorded it. Talks about how uh, they didn't believe any of the superstition. They thought the it was just an asteroid or like a, a comet or something, and that the primitives just had superstitions about dying. Uh, but it turns out they got stuck on this planet and they fucking died. Uh, and that's it. So it's really just pointing out like there's a bunch of pros about how. You know, the, the hills are covered in blood, and, like, the diseases that everything's suffering from are fucking terrible. Um, he talks about how he's got this plague, <clears throat> and uh, one of the newer plagues that's going to end up, end up killing him. He talks about how he has this plague, and it dissolves his skin, and he wakes up on his bed, and, like, his skin is stuck to the bed, and his flesh falls off his, his bones, and everything hurts. He says when he moves, a living flame runs through his bones... So this is really just to point out, like, this distant spaceship has the power to fuck up an entire planet, even while it's in sleep mode. And uh, that's the point of the prologue. So there you go. Uh, That's the seed ship. The next chapter covers how Haviland Tuff manages to gain control of it.